When you first power on the access point, the power light displays a steady red color for about 20 to 25 seconds. After that, it will start to flash green for about another 15 seconds, and then finally it settles on a steady green. So after about 40 seconds, you're ready to work with the access point, and we'll begin by logging into the GUI. The access point is now up and running, and we have the option to log in at the GUI, so I shall enter the default username and password of Super, and the password is sp-admin. And the first thing that we're looking for is the software version that the access point is running. We can see here it's code 104, which is the latest code that was shipped with the access point at the time that this video was made. So you might see a more advanced version than this. And that's great. So the access point we know is running the right code. Now, it could be the case that you are migrating access points from previous installations, and it's possible that you will see different code here in that case. And if that is the case, then you've got a couple of options. If your access points have been connected to zone directors previously, then you should be OK to follow the same steps to register the access point. If your access points have been connected to a smart zone controller, then it'll be a good idea to reinstall the firmware a couple of times because firmware is stored in two banks. So just download the latest version of the 104 firmware and install it a couple of times and then you'll be ready to go. From here, the next thing to look at is under administration and management. And here, there's a couple of things that we want to look at. What we're interested in is about two thirds of the way down the page. And it begins with the controller discovery agent LWAP, which is enabled by default. And this is the agent that's going to look for a connection to zone directors. The smart cell gateway agent is also enabled by default. And that's the agent that allows us to connect these access points to smart zone controllers. And you can find out more about that in the separate smart zone course. The cloud discovery agent allows us to discover Ruckus Cloud, and that's also enabled by default. So with all of these agents enabled, the access point actually has the potential to connect to any one of these controllers and register. But we're only really interested in the LWAP discovery. Now, where this is interesting for us is because if the zone director is on the same layer 2 network, i.e. the access points and the controller can see each other on the same layer 2 network, then the access points will automatically go ahead and attempt to register. And that's clearly something that we want to avoid. And I'll show you how to do that in the next section. The final thing we're going to look at is the CLI. So I've got my SSH connection to the access point here. So I will log in now with the default username and password. There's a couple of commands that you should know about. The first one is to view the firmware that's on the access point. So we do that by issuing the command firmware show all. And we can see here that the access point has code 104. I've actually zoomed in on this, but if we scroll up, we can see also 104 here because the firmware is stored in two banks. So 104 there and 104 there. So we know this is the access point it's in its default state. It's ready to go. Another command that's important is get director. When we do that, we can see that there is no connection to a zone director. We haven't established that registration process and joined a zone director yet. So we're in a state where we're really ready to go and ready to connect. So with access to the GUI and access to the CLI, you've now got two methods available to connect up to the access point and tell it where it should find the zone director to register to. We're going to look at these processes in the next module. Thank you.